So we've all seen the images of hundreds, if not thousands of people climbing the likes of Penavan, but one mountain range tucked away in the Brecon Beacons National Park, which is a little less explored and equally as dramatic and just as epic is this Llinnaban Vach. And today I'm off to check it out. Now the path from the car park below follows the river up the valley and passes through a trout farm, gradually climbing to reveal more and more of this breathtaking landscape minute by minute. The walk then continues alongside a picturesque river called the Avon Souther, which flows down the steep come from the lake above. Soon at 1,660 feet above sea level, the looming glacial backdrop comes into view before finally arriving at the lake itself, which is shrouded in Welsh legend. Llinavan means Lake of the Small Beacon Hill, and it's described by some as one of the most magical and breathtaking sights in all of Wales, and it's easy to see why. So the story goes back in the 13th century, a farmer grazing his cattle on the slopes behind me saw the most beautiful girl emerge from Llinnaban Vach. Now there are different versions of the legend, but pretty much all suggest they went on to marry, have children, but the farmer ended up living his days alone, and ultimately the lady returned to the lake. But if you're more into the sights and the sounds rather than my mystical storytelling, my suggestion is to carry on up the ridge to the north, overlooking the lake which continues over Picosti, on to Van Brachainiog and Llinnavan Vaur and Van Heer. And you know, the one thing I love about this trek is there's absolutely nobody around. It's just you and the mountain range. It's even been named one of the top 1,000 must-see sites across the globe in a list compiled by Lonely Planet. So the route takes you through the Western Beacons, also known as the Carmarthenshire Fans or the Black Mountain Range, and next up is that, Picusti. Picusti is the second highest peak of the Carmarthenshire fans, and the summit is marked by a large Bronze Age round barrow. Now the views to the north are especially impressive when the weather like today is clear, with a chance to see the Cambrian Mountains, Manith Epint and Brecon in the far distance. Or looking just behind you is Swansea and the Bristol Channel to the south. Next up is Van Brachainiog, the highest peak which officially takes you into Powys and offers yet another superb viewpoint. So there we are, the triangulation point at Van Brachainiog, 2,633 feet above sea level, and just over the edge, some amazing views of Llyna Van Vaur. The cum below the summit drains into the River Rusk to the north, the Avon Turch to the south, and the River Tower to the east.
This remote location and steep terrain also happens to be the perfect training ground for the HM Coast Guard from St. Athen, who is undergoing various flying exercises on the day of my visit. The walk back down is equally as breathtaking, with a quick chance to see the amazing views over Llinavan Vaur, or Lake of the Big Peak. A short climb down the westerly hills is my next stop. Now, as well as the amazing views from the top of Van Heer, there's also plenty of history on the mountainside as well. Behind me is the crash site of a British jet fighter, the de Havilland Vampire FB5. The de Havilland Vampire ended service just months after World War II ended. It quickly proved to be effective and was adopted as a replacement to the wartime piston-engined fighter aircraft in the late 1940s. Now, this particular plane crashed on the 9th of October, way back in 1953, after the pilot descended out of the thick cloud above and into the mountainside behind me. The Vampire was undertaking a training flight from RAF Pembury when 21-year-old pilot officer John Raymond Balduck was killed on active service. Now, local newspapers at the time recorded the events of the crash as they happened, and I've got here an extract of one newspaper. It says, once again, the mist and shrouded slopes of the Black Mountains have claimed yet another flyer victim. It's a cold, hard fact that wreckage of crashed planes have straddled these inhospitable slopes on at least five occasions. And it goes on to talk about the tragic circumstances of the pilot of the de Havilland vampire behind me. The authorities went on to ask for help to find the crash site and were so grateful for the help from miners and other local residents during the search that it suggested they gave £100 to the locality to build two ambulance kiosks. The journey also gives you the chance to see the amazing landscape in reverse and I opted to climb down the ridge just below Picos D. And if you've got a story to share about this particular climb or an amazing find that I've missed, why not pop that in the comments section below? And as you might have noticed already, the dramatic landscape carved out during the last ice age seems a bit of a forgotten gem. I counted just three people during the entire day. So, personally, I don't think there's another landscape quite like it anywhere in Wales. And once you've circumnavigated the lake to reach the original path, the track back down is easy to find. But yeah, when you do return to your car, don't be surprised to find it's become a useful tool for the local sheep. Finally, just before I end my visit, the drive home is just as dramatic. Cuckoo Turn or Tro Cuckoo, to give it its local name, is the Black Mountain Pass which stretches 20 miles on the A4069 in Carmarthenshire and, as luck would have it, is my way home. And if you've never been here before, but that stretch of road looks familiar, well, it's used in everything from magazine shoots and well-known films, TV shows, including Top Gear, and a string of well-known car ads. Completed in 1819 to transport coal from the pits in Burnhamon up to the lime kilns on top of the mountain, it's now become a tourist destination in its own right. And with these amazing views, it's easy to see why. If you've enjoyed the vlog, why not like and subscribe below. Until next time.